Hey everybody, it's Janice with Creating Through Chaos, and today we're going to start this project off using one of these large styrofoam balls and a dowel I just poked into the bottom of it. And then I'm going to take this spackling, and I got this at Walmart, and I'm just going to spread it all over the styrofoam ball. And once it's fully filled, I am going to set it aside to dry. Once it's dried for about 30 to 40 minutes and it's not fully dry, I'm going to take it back inside. I'm going to run my fingers in some water and use a spray bottle, and I'm going to smooth out all of the spackling. I'm just using my fingers to do this. No special tools, just making sure that it makes it so that it's smooth. Once you have the ball all smooth, I am going to use the cutter color buttermilk and paint the styrofoam ball. And I'm going to paint right over the spackling. And I gave it two coats. Once I have that all painted, I'm going to set that aside. And I cut down the dowel that I was using. And I'm going to paint that dowel buttermilk also. Once I have it all painted in the buttermilk color and it's dry, I'm going to take some burgundy. And I'm just going to do a candy cane stripe around it. So I just started at the top and kind of spun the dowel around and painted a line to look like a candy cane stripe. And I'm just going to go all the way around the dowel. And this doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be even. You're really not going to see this as much, but it's one of those little things that make a big difference. So I got this spool at a thrift store for a dollar. And I have been waiting to find one of these because this project is something I've always wanted to make. And I'm going to stick that dowel right into the center of the spool. Now your dowel will be cut as long as you want and can be as round as you want depending on the spool that you're using. So I'm going to put some hot glue in that hole and some hot glue in the styrofoam ball and glue that right onto the dowel. And as you can tell, we're making a snowman. Next, I'm going to take this sock that I got at Dollar Tree and I coffee stained it and I'm going to wrap this right over his head and then I'm going to arrange it and then cut off the excess. I flipped over the cuff onto his head to make it look like a little cuff for the hat. Once I have the sock on there and I have the excess cut off, I am going to tie off the end with a piece of twine and then I'm going to kind of arrange it cut off the excess twine, and then I'm going to glue a couple spots on the hat in place so that it doesn't move around on me. And glue back there, and I ended up putting a little glue in the front too. Cutting off more of that bottom of the sock just to make sure that it's all even, make sure that my cuff looks good. And now it's time to paint our snowman face. So I'm going to add two dots for his eyes. And then I'm going to take a thin fine line marker and draw out his nose. So I'm just going to do like a sideways carrot shape. So basically a sideways teardrop and I kind of brought out the tip of it. So it comes to a point. Then I'm gonna go back to using the back side of my paintbrush and do the dots for his mouth. You can do as many of these. You can do this face however you want. This is just how I'm going to do it. And I did enough dots for his whole mouth. Then I'm going to take some orange paint and I'm going to fill in that nose. Then I just used a really, really thin brush for this. And just sort of fill in where you were and kind of go over your line so you don't see the line, but the line will look good for the shading. And I think I did two coats of orange on the nose. And I let that all dry. Then I'm going to come back and take some of that buttermilk paint, again, a very thin brush, and I'm going to put some slices in the carrot. So just a couple of lines on the carrot to make it look like the slices. Then I'm going to take some white and add it to each one of the mouth dots and to the eyes, which I didn't do on camera. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of the color Burnt Umber, and I kind of dry brushed it on to the bottom of his nose to add a little definition and a little bit of shading. So just a quick once over on the nose with some of that burnt umber color right at the bottom of it. And then I took some pink paint and I dabbed it onto a paintbrush and then I 
mostly wiped off all of it. And now I am going to do some rosy cheeks for him. I'm just going to go around on each side, just kind of dabbing in. And this is like a very, very dry brush, not overdoing it with the pink. Making sure that my paint underneath was dry before I added the pink cheeks. I didn't want to get that black on there. And how stinking cute is that? Next, I'm going to take a liner brush again. This is just a really thin brush and some white paint. And I'm going to paint a snowflake right here on his cheek. So I just did basically a star using the lines. And then once I had all those lines done, I am going to add a dot with a stylist to each end of the lines and then another dot using the opposite side of the stylus to do one in the center. And I did one on his cheek over here. I did one on the other side and then I did one on like the underneath of his chin. So as you can see here, I'm still drawing out the lines. And now I'm going to take my stylus, dip it in paint, put a dot on each end of my snowflake. And then I'll add another one to the center once I have all these dots on. And I'm using the pointy side of the stylus to do this. And then I'm going to flip it over to use the bigger side to do the snowflake. And as you can see, I did another snowflake on this side and then another one on the bottom of his chin. They're kind of hard to see on camera, but they're there and they make a difference. Next, I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I am going to cover the top of his hat with Mod Podge. And this is going to dry clear so you won't even notice it. But I did a really good amount of Mod Podge onto his hat, just kind of in random spots all over. Making sure that I got the cuff of it right down on the bottom and the very top. And then I'm just going to cover all of this in glitter. And I, this is just fine glitter from Hobby Lobby. Then I took another thin brush and I'm going to go right across the top of the carrot nose. And then I'm going to add some glitter. I also added some glitter to each one of the snowflakes on his face also. Next, I'm going to take some torn red and white ticking fabric that I had previously coffee dyed. And I'm going to wrap that around the spool. And then I'm just going to glue it into place and cut off the excess. And then I'm just going to glue it a little bit just to hold it. And how cute is this? Next, I'm going to take the rest of that ticking fabric and I'm going to wrap it around his neck as his little scarf. So I'm just going to wrap it around and then tie it into a knot. And then just cut off some excess. And then I'm going to take this coffee dyed tag that I had and I'm going to stamp with the stamp that I had that says let it snow. And I'm going to stamp right onto the tag. Then I'm going to take a rusty bell and a rusty safety pin that I had and slide it through the hole on the tag. And then I'm going to add that to the front of the snowman right on his scarf on the knot. So I'm just going to push that through, which sometimes it's kind of hard to push the safety pins through the knots. So this takes a second. Once I have it on there, kind of arrange it in the way that I want it. And the bell wasn't sitting quite how I wanted, so I just added a little bit of glue to the back of the bell to hold it on to the tag. So I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the back of that bell and then push the tag into it so that it stays where I wanted it. I think I needed a smaller safety pin to hold the tag and the bell closer to each other, but I didn't have one. Next, I'm going to add a rusty bell to the end of his little hat over here where I tied the twine on. So I'm just going to add a bell to that. Then I'm going to add these little rusty snowflakes right to the top of his hat. And all of these rusty items I found at thrift stores. Um, one of my thrift stores has like a little craft department and somebody donated a ton of um, rusty stuff. So that's where I got it all. You can order it online, but honestly, I haven't had to. Next, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the underneath of the little lip of the hat up here on the top. I'm going to push this greenery through, 
and then hot glue that into place. And this is also going to help hold the hat down. And I just added a couple of pieces of greenery. I didn't want to overdo it. I actually wasn't even going to do this part, but I decided that I wanted to, and I'm very glad I did because I actually just added so much more character to this little guy. Then I had this little piece of berry. I'm going to stick that in there as well. Put a little bit of glue on the end of that and then just slide it in. And how stinking cute is he turning out already? Next, I'm going to take some of this uh, glitter snow. It's by Aileen's and I'm going to add a little to the bells, to the hat. I just kind of added it wherever I thought it needed it. So I added it on the bells. I added it on the base of the whole spool. I added it onto his hat, to some of the snowflakes, to some of the greenery, the very top of the tag. I added it around his, where his neck is just a little bit. And you can kind of play around with this part and, you know, put the snow. You don't even have to use the snow if you don't want to because he already has the glitter all over him. But I liked the snow. I love the look of it. I thought it turned out really, really cute. And this is just kind of the final touch to the whole project. Just to add that little extra detail to make him look a little bit more realistic and whimsical. And I think it did perfectly to do that. I absolutely love this project. I think it turned out so super cute. It was really fun to make. And a lot of the stuff we, you know, most of us have on hand and getting a spool, you can probably find one at a thrift store or an antique store, or you could use anything else. You could just use a dowel or you could use a candle holder. It's totally up to you. Um, I've really liked the spool and I happened to find one. So I thought this was a perfect idea and I love doing thrift store projects. So this was perfect for that. And as you can see, I added a little to the tag and I'm just kind of going around dabbing it here, there, and everywhere, and that is it. How absolutely adorable did this little guy turn out? He is probably one of my favorite projects. I think he is so super cute. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspires you to look at thrift store things differently. And as always, don't forget to spread the chaos.